Welcome everybody to another video on my games from the European Championship about my quest to qualify for the World Cup 2019. Two games I've discussed already, if you haven't seen them yet, check them out after this one. It's about the European Championship, I've played there in March, it was in Macedonia, I think I didn't say that in the last two videos, in Skopje and the first 22 will qualify for the World Cup and that was my goal. So we go to the round number 9 now and this needs a little bit of pretext. So in round 8 I played with the white piece against strong Russian Grandmaster Igor Lishi and I had an excellent preparation, I got to a winning position and I didn't convert or I didn't take my chance and I lost and that was a really tough loss for me and it put me at a spot at 5 points out of 8 and usually they say you need seven and a half out of 11 to qualify but seven and a half in a good tie break and i didn't have a good tie break either way i knew i had to win this next game to have any kind of chance to be still in contention for the world cup places with that being said i played with the black pieces against international master pedro kolubka from ukraine and he had played a pretty good tournament up to this point and he only needed a draw to make his last grandmaster norm i believe so this put me in kind of a tough spot because I'm playing with black and my opponent only needs a draw with white. Not so easy. So let's see how it goes. e4 and I played e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5 and a6, bishop a4 and d6. This is my preferred variation here. It's called, I believe, the delayed Steinitz variation and it gives quite rich positions and this is what I was aiming for and he played bishop takes c6 right away and I believe he was thinking that I need to take here on d4 after which the position becomes a little bit more simplified and this would be in line with his goal to reach a position where he's maybe a little bit better and he can make a draw but I was quite happy about this development because here can go f6 which keeps the position very complex. It's a double-edged move, but it keeps the position quite imbalanced. So I stabilize the center. On the other hand, such an odd move to play f6, taking away the square from my knight. But white doesn't have any way to open the position and to exploit the weakened squares in my position right now because he has given up his white light squared bishop already. Knight c3. And there are two plans pretty much here, knight e7, knight g6, and what I played g6. Honestly, I didn't remember much about this. I didn't expect this to happen on the board. And I knew there was this plan to play knight h6, knight f7, so I was going for this. And he played pretty quickly h4, with the obvious intention to go h5. So I went bishop g4 to stop that, and bishop e3, and here it took a super long fake, and I couldn't really come up with a constructive plan. In the end, I played bishop g7 and he knew, okay, he wants to go queen d2 and stop me from going knight h6. The problem, if I go knight h6 immediately, I thought he'll probably take on e5. And after f takes e5, I play something like h5. And I was looking at something... Wait, no, he doesn't take on e5. Excuse me, he plays h5 right away. And if I take the bishop, he sacrifices the exchange effort. This looked, this looked very strong to me, something like this. Knight h4, however a computer says I'm wrong, which is funny. So I guess I miss it, but this looked very scary to me. Something like this. Anyway, computer tells me there are better options here for white, for example, to go d5 here. And um, maybe to still have this exchange sacrifice as an option. And also there's this idea to, to take an h6 and play and play g4, which this line I saw and I realized, okay, this is good for me because of this line. Um, okay, I'm a little bit all, all over the place now. What I want to say is that I took a long thing and I didn't see a good way to continue at this point. So I played bishop g7, queen d2, stopping me to play my plan. And so I played knight e7. He took on e5 and I took with the f pawn and he goes knight h2, which is also a good move. So up here he was playing quickly, he was playing confidently and I was already, well, low on, not low on time, but not much lower than him. 
and also didn't like my position. So this was not on off to a good start. Bishop e6 and now he goes h5. And well, the pawn is if I take, I thought he wants to go knight f1, knight g3, recover the pawn, open up my king side and this looked unpleasant. In either way, the position for black is not too great already. So I went h6, threatening to go g5, so he takes on g6, I go knight takes g6. And now he played knight f3 back and I went queen f6 and he castled long. He cannot take the pawn on h6 because of knight f4 and the bishop is pinned and will be lost. But long castle is creating this threat of bishop takes h6. And here I played knight f4. The other move I consider was bishop g4 when white probably should go rook dg1. But even if he takes an h6, this is not a position I thought I have any chance of winning. Okay, to be, to be honest, I wasn't too concerned about winning, but I, I saw this and thought, well, this is not going to give me much. Knight f4, and here he continued to play quickly, and that was a mistake. He took on f4 instead, knight h4, I think would give white a really good position. Computer says best move is to play the knight back to g6, and this is already telling you something, and also something I didn't want to do, and then he could have at least repeated the position three times and made a draw. I was considering long castle, but my king is just too weak here. He could even play knight a4 if I did like queen a5, maybe sometimes even a rook swing. Well, game continues obviously, but white is clearly better. So bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, e takes f4. Would be nice to get something going here, but e5, I didn't really like this, plays e5. Destroys my structure. Computer says even knight takes e5 is possible here, but even if he goes knight e4, I did not like this at all for black. So I went queen takes f4, queen takes, pawn takes, and now he played another mistake or inaccuracy, I should say, knight d4. Knight e2 instead would be just good and Maybe I missed this move completely, or maybe I just had to play this knight f4. I don't remember at this point, but it seems to me white will be in the driver's seat here. Best is bishop g4, knight takes f4, castle, and knight d3. And we get to a position like this, where the knight is very well placed. White has the better structure and is pushing here, I would say. So he goes knight d4 instead. I come up with queen d7. I was quite happy to connect my rooks and to protect both both, po both points in this way. And he goes knight c2, which is decent, rook a f8. And here he should probably take on e6, play f3, and he's a little bit better. But okay, not much is happening. He plays rook h4 and he offers a draw. Well, that was definitely the wrong point in time to offer a draw because the trend of the game has been going against him and with this move, I'm almost being better already. So I saw a way to continue and even though I was much low on time, I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Bishop f6 makes a lot of sense. He cannot take on f4 and he actually went back to h1, which is another inaccuracy. He should take on e6 and I take on h4, takes on f8, I take back, he goes f3 and here, I should probably, I was thinking bishop f2, bishop e3, but this is not so great after all. I should play rook g8, knight takes f4, and now rook g3 with the intention of bishop g5. He has to move the knight, and I take on g2. And this, according to computer's equal, I would still prefer black though, because of my past pawn. So, back to the game, he goes rook back, and I play bishop c4, which is a move I quite liked. The point is, if he takes on f4, I'll go bishop g5, again pinning and winning back the pawn with an advantage. Now my rook would be really active and this would be good. So he goes b3, I take on e2. And what did I do now? He actually, only when this position arrives on the board, I realized what I could do now. So take a moment if you want to and try to figure this out, black to move. 
So f3 is a strong move to get rid of my weakness and activate my pieces. He has to take and bishop g5 check and by doing so I win back the pawn. He played f4, bishop takes f4. Well, he could take but this rook and game would be also difficult I would say because I'm winning another pawn and he will have to fight for a draw. So he goes king b1. I played a bishop back to e5 which looked very logical to me. It seems maybe that bishop g5 to keep this pawn defended would be better. Okay, nuances. Let's go to bishop e5 and here knight c1 would have been a good move. I think we just missed this both that I can play this move because of the rook takes f2, knight d3 wins material. And once he gets the knight to d3, his position has improved by a lot, I would say, and white should be able to hold this. So rook df1, rook f3, here I repeated moves once to get closer to move 40, a technique I like to do when I have the chance and to get some extra time on the clock as well, 30 seconds per move. And now I go rook f4. Of course I want to continue, f3 and rook af8. And here he made a mistake, he sh probably should play rook d1, I go rook 4 f6 defend my pawn. Game continues, but white should be able to hold once again, even though it's a bit unpleasant, I would say, because my bishop is super strong, he has this weakness on f3, and I have to pass pawn. So I was somewhat optimistic about my chances here. He goes rook takes h6, and I go rook takes e4, so I win back the pawn, and my rooks are becoming more active. Rook d1, rook e3, and here was quite happy. He has this weakness, his knight is passive, his king is also in some danger. My bishop is super strong, so this is a clearly better position for black, but still needs to be won. Rook h4. I thought his intention was not to swap off rooks, and I played bishop c3 in return, which, well, wasn't really necessary. I should just go c5. And if he goes rook e4, I mean this position, I don't know if it's winning for black, but Definitely a good practical chance, I would say. Sooner or later, I'll win this pawn, and then it's gonna be four against three. Who knows, who knows. Bishop c3, I think I was not happy with this move because it allowed f4, but he didn't take this opportunity. He played rook h7 check instead, and went back to h2, something I didn't see at all, and I think it doesn't make that much sense anyway. And now I thought at least his idea is to go rook f2 to put his rook behind the pawn. And if rook e1, he can go rook f1. But he didn't do this either. I believe this would have been better. He played rook h1. Another odd move. And now he's, well, pretty tied up with protecting the first rank and protecting the pawn. So here I should just go a5, what I do also later in the game to open up some files against his king. Instead I went bishop e5 back and he went rook f1, that makes sense, he wants to go f4 to free his knight. So I had to go rook f8 and as you can see I, I just had a good harmonious setup but then I did something again to, to disorganize myself. Rook h4. And now we had reached move 40, which is my excuse also for all these inaccuracies, at least on my part. Um, and now I went back with the bishop. And he goes back to h1. I was like, okay, well, if you're waiting, I'll go, I'll go ahead and improve my position with a5. Um, and here, my idea is to go a4 and either go a3 or take on b3. And... He cannot go a4 really because then I play c5, c4 and his king is even weaker. So he played rook d1 and I go a4. And this is a critical moment. How would you respond here after rook h8? Would you take on b3, would you play a3 or would you maybe play something else? Again, stop the video if you'd like to. Okay, I took on b3 and this is a mistake. Rook f8 was of course a move we considered. The threat is very strong as rook e1. And I was looking at this position and I suppose I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure enough. And I wasn't sure if this is a better version or what I did in the game. But this is clearly a better chance. I can go a3 and probably this is winning. 
this is probably winning. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'll push my pawns forward somehow and with his weak king, I think very good chance. But I was thinking maybe this is a fortress, I would like to keep both rooks on the board. And so I did. A3 would be also a decent move. A takes B3, he goes C takes B3. And the position remains clearly better for me, but White also keeps his chance. Now I played another mistake, I should say, d5 instead c5 to put the bishop on d4 would have been much better. Not sure what I didn't like here. Not sure. Anyways, this is still quite unpleasant for White. d5, king c2, bishop f6 back, rook f4. He pins my bishop, but I play bishop rook to e6, rook d2, rook f8. And here he should probably play rook g4 and he's quite close to holding the position. It's only plus equal uh, uh, equal plus for me at this point. Instead he goes knight h3, which first I thought was a blunder. Maybe it was half a blunder because after rook h8 he has some difficulties since there's this uh, move bishop g5. But maybe he was lucky and he had this move rook a4. I mean, maybe he was lucky that he didn't see this before, but then he still had this escape of rook a4, rook a8. Still, here I should once again exchange one pair of rooks and play this position, which is promising for black because my pieces are active, his pawns are not going anywhere, I have some um, flexibility here with my pawns. I don't know. Probably white can hold, but he has to answer some questions. I play king d7 instead, rook g2, bishop f6, and here rook e2 would be a good way to trade rooks, but keep the active rook in a4. He goes knight e2 instead, rook e3, f4, rook h8, and we're slowly moving to a part of the game where I was pretty low on time, and he had, he had definitely 10 or 15 minutes more but I need to still try something obviously I want to win this somehow I want to get this damn win he played he played king d2 and here and also the moves later knight c1 knight d3 would be a really sensible maneuver king d2 rook f3 rook h2 and I was trying to somehow crack his defense which was not easy it's pretty stable here so I play my rook to f1. Again, knight c1, knight d3 would be decent. King c2, rook e1. And now I'm kind of forcing him, kind of asking him to do this. If he goes king d2, I want to go rook b1. The idea rook b2. So kind of forcing him to go knight c1. Okay, king d6. Rook h6, rook e6. I think with rook h6 he offered another draw. But I said, okay, come on. Let's see it. We'll, we'll play this out and if you get the draw, you earn it and that's it. And we continued. Rook h e6. The pawn is f5. Doesn't work because of rook takes c1. Little tactic and I win a piece. So rook h2. And I need to do something. I need to improve my position. So I go c5. Get my pawns rolling. Rook a6 check. It's not really helping him. I just go c6. And now knight d3. Rook 1, e4. And now he makes the decisive mistake. His position is, again, quite difficult. Still defendable, but f5 is a mistake. He should play something like a3. It's, it's not easy. Rook h6 says the computer, not easy to play. I mean, another idea of mine is to play c4, of course, in, uh, in the right moment. So he goes f5, and now I trade the rooks, because now after the rooks come off, I ha also have this diagonal available and this makes all the difference here. King d1, rook h2, and he makes the decisive mistake. He should go rook a4, but also here I believe black should be winning in the end because rook and bishop are very active, his king is passive on the first rank, and I have these pawns. I believe with correct play this should be winning for black. After a4, it's definitely winning because of bishop g5. And his rook is 
far away from the action and bishop and my rook will just harass this knight on d3 which doesn't have many places to go as you can see already rook d2 just threatens to win the knight so he plays it back to e1 um, if king e1 for example i can just go c4 and the knight is running out of squares so that's it and I apologize if you hear this background noise. Somebody has just started to make some noise nearby. And I hope they stop soon. All right, so he goes knight e1, rook d2 check. Obviously I can give a lot of checks here, which I did first to improve my rook, but I don't have a winning discover check right away. So I go d4 and he tries what he can with his f pawn. He pushes the f pawn forward f6 i give another check to also gain some time on the clock repeat the position once and i go forward d3 point is if he takes i just win the knight that's it so he pushes forward f7 and <laughs> once again okay i also enjoyed this a little bit to give these checks you know i like to do this kind of thing and now where's the window where is the win not the window, but where is the win? What to do with black? Well, it's not too hard, in fact. Just go d2. The pawn is defended here, and then nothing happens. I mean, if he goes fa queen, I just take, and that's it. So at this point, he resigned because, well, what to do? Uh, rook a8, I take on f7 and i think he's not even getting to a position where i take on e1 i'm just a piece down which would be also winning but i think i can get more or it doesn't matter i mean there are many winning ways at this point so that was a really huge point to me it was like a fighting game from the beginning to end it took a lot of energy it took five and a half hours or so i believe to grind down my opponent but I was very happy that I did in the end and was so important to get back into the tournament with a win to come back like that and I want to share with you this great fight which was filled with mistakes from both sides but in the end I persevered and got this win so that put me at six out of nine and next up was a strong Russian Grandmaster and we looked at this game in the next video. So stay tuned for that. For now, if you have any questions about this video, just post it below and we'll finish here before the noise gets too loud. All right, see you guys, bye.